What's up everybody? This is the Great Harry. And today I want to show you a test that I performed four weeks ago. So four weeks ago, I performed a test to demonstrate the difference between using seven generation dish soap and Drexel along with my two other ingredients, the air entrainment and the air creed thickener. So this test was to see how tall I could pour uh, before I started getting collapsing of the foam bubbles. So I did this pour, it's about eight feet tall with aircrete. This is an eight inch thick uh, column that I made out of plastic. And you'll see that in the video. And so I filled this with aircrete and I put a mark at where I stopped. And um, then I did the, another mix using my ingredients of the air entrainment and the aircrete thickener with Drexel and I poured the same thing on this side. Now this one, this uh, plastic column leaked on me. So I had aircrete that leaked out but where it stopped is pretty much where it stayed. It did not shrink below the point where it where it settled after it finished leaking. So they both did really good as far as keeping their height uh, that I poured them at. I was expecting a lot more collapsing, especially from the seventh generation. Maybe it didn't happen because of the amount of uh, dish soap that I used, which was about 25 or 30 ounces per five gallons. <clears throat> that could be it. But the thing I keep hearing everywhere from people is, you can't pour more than, you know, like 12 inches or something before your air creek collapses. I don't get it. Uh, I poured eight feet and I didn't get any collapsing. It stood exactly where it stopped. Now, the real, uh, the real test I found out was in its curing. When after about two days, when this aircrete made with seven generation dish soap uh, was setting, it was easy like it is right now for me to push my finger into it. Opposed to this one after two days was solid. So I'm thinking the real test here was showing the strength difference between using seven generation dish soap and, and my mix of ingredients of Drexel, air entrainment and aircrete thickener. So I'm going to do a push test with my testing tool and we're going to see how far we could push into uh, this sample made with 7 generation and this sample made with Drexel, air entrainment and the thickening agent. Now my belief is from my experience it's the thickening agent alone that gives it its strength but there were a total of three ingredients all said and done in this mix here. So we're going to do a push test and see what kind of results we get. So this is the tool that I use for the push test. It has a push uh, option here and a pull option here. If you hook a, put a hook onto here you could pull. As you can see I'm pulling with my hand here and I'm getting a reading. Or you push to get a reading. So I've used this tool in the past to do some aircrete experiments and uh, it works really good. So we're going to do the push test on the sample here made with seventh generation dish soap. So I'll hold this to the side and I'm just going to push as hard as I can and then we're going to measure uh, the depth of the hole. Okay, so after I push with this tool, we'll use the uh, measuring uh, gauge here to measure how deep the hole is. So I pushed with about 85 pounds of force and we have a dent here and I actually think I'm going to remove this plastic first and redo the test because the plastic is definitely interfering. Okay. 
Okay, so I actually see a little void here. All right, we're gonna redo this test now. And there's actually a bunch of little dents here from me pushing on it uh, uh, over the past few weeks. Okay, so we got the meter zeroed out and I got a nice clean spot here. Whoa, that went in really easy. That was uh, 45 pounds of force. And it went in all the way, so let's see how deep that went in. It went in about one and a half inches deep on that sample. And again, even now with my finger, I could push into this and it's been about three weeks already. So let's check the other sample. Okay, I'll do the same thing. I'll make a little window here. So the plastic doesn't affect the test. And having this plastic here the entire time has just helped to trap that moisture in there to give it a real maximum cure time. Okay, so I zeroed out the meter and I'm going to push right here. <clears throat> I push with about 80 pounds of force and I'll measure the indentation made. Zero out. Point one seven five of an inch with 85 pounds of force. I'm going to redo both of these tests again. I'm going to start here on the uh, seven generation side. I'll pick another clean spot where I haven't pushed before with my finger. A nice smooth spot there. I'm going to zero out the meter and I'm going to push here as hard as I can. That went in super easy. That's uh, about 39 pounds of force. I'll do it one more time. I'll zero out and I'll, I'll push a little slowly this time. Okay, I pushed more slowly and that reads about 45 pounds of force. So we'll measure the last hole I just made. We're zeroed out. And that's 1.3 uh, 1.3 inches deep. Let's check the hole I made previously. Yeah, it's 1.35, 1.36 inches. So we'll go to the thickening sample here. I'll do the same thing. I'll cut a window further down here. Zero out the meter. We're on zero. And I'm going to slowly push. I'm 
I pushed with about 95 pounds of force and <laughs> that is solid. That barely even made a dent. We're zeroed out. That's not even an inch. That's 0 .0685. 0 .0685 of an inch. Let's do that in, in millimeters. It's a... Uh, It's 1.74 millimeters. Let, let me give you this this other sample here in millimeters for our all our European watchers. Thirty-three point six five millimeters. So there's a big difference there. Now the thing is this sample this sample was about this strength after three days um yeah it was really strong i can't i can't really tell you exactly all i can say is i could not push it in with my finger i didn't do the push test after three days with the meter i didn't use this gauge here to see how deep i could go in after three days but after three days, it, it doesn't feel any different to me than it did after, after the third day of curing. I could not make a dent with this with my finger. And now it's been sitting four weeks and it is super strong. And you're going to see in the video how I made these mixes and how I uh, pumped them. Rather, how I, I filled these columns up with the... Uh, Aircree Harry DIY Aircree pump. Anyway, that was it. Uh, this is just an example of using a Drexel foaming agent in conjunction with the Aircree Harry thickening agent. The thickening agent uh, not only makes your Aircree much, much stronger, but it allows you to pour at great heights. Now this test, had it not leaked, was going to demonstrate how I could pour 12 feet. And I'll just show you how tall I made these things. You see, this is a standard 8 foot shipping container. It's about 6 inches off the ground there. It's on a railroad tie. And originally I was going to pour this all the way up to the top. But after making one 55 gallon drum, uh, this is as tall as I was able to pour. This is an 8 inch column. And I couldn't, that's as high as one 55 gallon barrel went. It was up to here. And I had the same thing on the other side. But this one leaked at the bottom, so I didn't get to uh, get the same exact results as far as the height. But what I did demonstrate is after it stopped, it did not settle anymore. I didn't get any collapsing. And had I filled this to the top, I would not have gotten any collapsing. Especially since the seventh generation, and you can see how weak it is. Look, I can I can chip. I'm using my hand to chip this away, and um, that's how much weaker it is. So, if you're building an aircree dome, why build it weak when you can build it strong just by getting yourself the aircree Harry thickening agent and combined with the Drexel and air entrainment. But just the thickening agent is what gives you the strength. I've poured slabs on my domes where I've poured 1,200 gallons, about 30 inches deep. 
And the next day, I was able to stand on it. The next day, I was standing on the slab. And we're not even talking about 24 hours. We're talking about maybe, it was maybe 12 hours of curing before I could stand on it uh, at 30 inches deep. If you did that a mix like this, Aircrete, you just sink right in with, with your weight. And, you know, it, it was we had a workshop and it was multiple people standing on it. So it wasn't at maximum strength, but <laughs> after 12 hours, you could stand on it. That's pretty impressive. And uh, I'll tell you something else. I made this slab here, uh, this little walkway out of Aircrete. And really, Aircrete has a very bad a wear surface. Now, after three days, I was already walking and standing on this uh, but had I not done that I mean this surface is really strong after three days I was walking on it and I did tear some up this is always meant to get a hard coat of concrete I was gonna put a very thin coat of concrete on here as a, as a wear surface but it's really been impressive how strong it is. And again, this is made with the thickening agent as well. Anyway, I'm Aircrete Harry. You want to go to aircreteharry.com to purchase your Aircrete thickening agent for stronger Aircrete as well as taller pores without collapsing. It's very impressive. Anyway, that's it from now. Agree, Harry. Peace out. I love you all, and I'll catch you later. I'm running out of time. Every day goes by so fast. And every moment counts, baby. I don't want to miss a thing. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Under the stars This is Air Crete Harry, and today I'm doing an experiment. I'll be making Air Crete using the traditional method most people use, using seventh generation dish, dish soap. 
and we'll make the air creep put it into the DIY air creep Harry pump and we're gonna fill these homemade columns out of plastic then I'll make air creep using Drexel and my two other ingredients the air entrainment and a thickening agent and I'll pour it in this column and I'll fill them to the top it's about 12 feet and the idea is to test how tall can you pour uh, before your foam bubbles begin collapsing. And I want to test if the thickening agent allows me to pour taller than just using 7th generation. So I have two buckets, two 5 gallon buckets filled with water. I'm going to use the entire bottle of 7th generation because for my past test I uh, discovered you need to use an entire bottle to get the equivalent foam density that Drexel would give you at just four ounces so I'm going to pour this in the water Pour about four ounces of Drexel into the other bucket. <laughs> 